Susul. Hello and welcome to Under the Plum Bob podcast. This is a show where a couple of close friends talk about similar interests, that being anything related to the EA Maxis series of games called The Sims. Um, we've got kind of a, a mixed bag of hosts today. Uh, my name is Melissa. I'm your friendly neighborhood editor slash sometimes host. I'm Melly, the only actual llama person here today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Marissa. I'm just hitching my uh you know hitch to this star i don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of many mixed metaphors many mixed uh team members so um what you're getting today dear listeners is um a social bunny host a llama host and a cow plant host um because a bunch of us really wanted to talk about this build challenge which is a type of challenge we don't get to do a whole lot um on under the plum bob if you have ideas for build challenges let us know you can email us visit under the to shout us out and let us know what build challenges you'd like to see us do but today mm-hmm. we're going to do a challenge that does it have a name Home sweet home. Sure. We're doing what we're going to call the home sweet home challenge, um, where you build your existing actual real life home in The Sims, either your house, the house you grew up in, where you currently live, um, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not a build expert, and I think I'm the odd man out here because Melly, definitely an expert. Marissa, definitely an expert in building, decorating, um, so I'm just going to be sitting here asking many, many questions about their experience. Before we go on, we want to address the llama in the room. Llama being me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Address the llama in the room. <laughs> address the llama. <laughs> I, Melly, have been a really bad host for the past couple of episodes. No. And I kind of want to address that because I feel bad. I haven't been in the past, like, five llama episodes um it needs to be said <laughs> um in our why we simps episode i mentioned a little bit how i struggled with hypothyroidism and a big part of that was infertility issues so for the past few years um my significant other and i have been trying to have a kid it wasn't happening it led to a whole bunch of depression yada 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 fast forward i accidentally got pregnant Thanks to my antidepressants. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I wasn't talking about it because you don't talk about it for the first few months, especially when you have um, fertility issues. The risk of miscarrying is very high. So I don't I didn't want to like sure. put it out in the mm-hmm. world. And be like, hey, guys, I'm having a baby. And then next week be like, hey, guys, I'm not having a baby. It's too much. But yes, I am pregnant. I am expecting a new podcast team member Hi. in December. Oh my gosh, so cute. Very excited. I didn't think it was going to be this way. The first four months have been an absolute hell for me, which is why I haven't been active on the podcast. Oh. Um, I can't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. I was just laying in bed and throwing up all day. <laughs> it oh wasn't gosh. fun. Jeez. But I'm somewhere now that I can actually eat wings again, which I miss so much. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it's a struggle. So I'm hoping that I can actually be more active as a host, as I'm supposed to be, because that's what I'm here for, to host. So that's where I've been. Um, Yeah, that's my life update for (laughs) y'all. We're so happy to have you today. We're happy to have you back. And we're happy, most of all, that you're feeling healthy and happy and you're you're growing a new team member because I mean listen we need all the help we can get as soon as that kid is up and typing we're uh-huh. we're gonna have Edit. them doing research yeah a new editor oh for sure after what it's put me in it's gonna have to earn its way into <laughs> the world because it's been rough <laughs> <laughs> no I think that's awesome I'm so excited for you Melly oh my gosh it's gonna be so exciting to have a little baby it's the first you're the first one I mean in this in this podcast full of ladies it is amazing that you're the, the first and only one pregnant right now let's be real yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a huge difference like I'm only used to having my dog babies 
So, right. I mean, a human baby. Ooh, I don't know, man. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> can't lock them in a room and just walk away for an hour. I mean, you can, but you should. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if the Sims has taught me anything, is that someone will come take care of them eventually. Maybe it'll be a yeah. social worker. Maybe it'll be the dad. <laughs> Who knows? But someone will be there. Check out our seven toddlers episode <laughs> yeah. uh, for tips on what not to do with babies. Yes. That's yeah, Melly, all you need to do is just go to the phone, hire a nanny, mm-hmm. or send them to daycare or a babysitter. I, I might do that. <laughs> and as someone who works in a daycare, hi, lots of babies yeah. there. <laughs> Bring yeah, them right? in. Bring them in. We love babies. <laughs> yeah, you already have a recommendation on a sitter. I mean, she lives kind of far away, but yeah, it's just like start. a couple hours. I'll send them via FedEx overnight ship. <laughs> yeah, FedEx <laughs> overnight the baby. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've gotten the gushy train going, I'm so thrilled because I I want to talk about our our childhood homes. Can we go around and kind of like give a little background on the the houses we grew up in or i guess are we doing have you done the house you grew up in or that or where you currently live i i've done all all of the things that's right Mm -hmm. so i'll go last you guys you guys probably had normal childhood so go for it (laughs) (laughs) melly what did you choose to to work on for this challenge well i picked the house that i'm living in now okay um it's not my home but it's a home. (laughs) So that's what I went with. I honestly thought this was going to be easy because I have a very standard ranch home. Um, But guess what? I played myself. It was not easy. I had to change the lot so many times because I would get the shell and then I'd look at the shell inside and I'm like, this is going to be too small for anything. So I'd keep having to move it and move it. Eventually, I just put it in the biggest lot that I could. And let it sit there. Um, I live on the bottom of a giant hill. I tried to incorporate that in the house. And the terrain tools just... Uh-uh. It, it didn't work out. So... <laughs> it doesn't look exactly how it would look. But I think it's very similar. Um, something that the Sims homes don't have. That like regular homes have. Are like the little insulation crevices in your home. So... A wall would look one way, but inside the wall, there's like a little hole that you don't account for. So you try and fill that hole with something else. Basically, my house is full of random little closets that have no access to them. (laughs) But I had to do it in order to fit this scale. So it looks pretty similar from the inside and the outside. I'm pretty sure I, I got everything to scale. This took me two work days. I'm sorry, boss. I was doing sim stuff at work. Um, <laughs> but I had to. I don't have time outside of work. <laughs> She's growing a human, people. I'm allowed. Leave Come on. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> if she needs to play sims at work, she can do it. It's for the health of the baby. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, I, I think I did a pretty good job of my house. I did take some pictures that I'll be posting later on. Um So you guys can judge me and tell me how bad I did. (laughs) I didn't landscape. I've mentioned this before as the, what what, what do you call that? My father-in-law. I, me, person. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I don't know. What What do you call that? I don't know what you call. (laughs) But my (laughs) father-in-law is an amazing landscaper. This man has such a green thumb and our lawn is beautiful. Mine, in game, it's just a tree with bushes, and that's it. That's all you get. I'm sorry. I can't landscape. I'm really bad at landscaping in game. I will fully admit that. I can't do it. I just, I just can't. I don't have the patience to put plant by plant by plant. No. If you hold, um, oh boy, I think it's shift to key. Okay, this is on a PC. I don't know about Mac. But I believe if you hold the shift key or the control key or the alt key. I don't remember which one, but if you hold a certain key, if you have like a plant and you hold that key, it keeps the plant active. Like, so you can just place a bunch. It, you don't have to keep going back and forth between the catalog and the game. I wish I knew that when I was building this because <laughs> I was getting so mad. Hip tip. Say it again. Okay. So if you, let's say you have a little, like a little bush and you want. Cool. I have the, the dead hawthorn tree selected. Tell yes. me how. 
dead hawthorn tree. You have that. Uh-huh. I can't for the life of me remember. It's I. I'm pretty sure it's shift. So you you have that. You're yep. clicking down on it. Press shift. Yeah. Place it. Now you should still have a hawthorn tree. As long as you hold shift down, you yeah. um you have to hold down shift. Yeah. And then you can place as many as you want. As many Great. as you can afford, I guess. So that's cool. what I do for landscaping. I'll just grab a cup co- like grass. I'll grab a thing of grass. I'll hold down the shift key, place it sp- randomly around. Then I'll grab a, the hydrangea bush, blah, 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 blah. Put it all kind mm-hmm. of around. And then I'll go in with like more fancy, like a tree or like something nicer. And then I'll kind of try to place it more organized. And it makes it look like you maybe can landscape. Landscaping also, quick tip, if you take the brown terrain paint and add mm-hmm. it just slightly underneath so it kind of peeks through the plants that makes it look more real and m- more purposeful, I guess. Like, oh, yes, this is plants. You know, I don't know. That yeah. helps. Uh, simlessy, simlessy, simlessy. Her YouTube build are super good. That's how I learned how to landscape. I didn't fucking landscape anything until I discovered hers. I would be like, tree, there you go. Have a good day. But watching her videos, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what she does. She literally just holds a shift key and just places a bunch of random shit around and somehow it works. And she, you know, kind of places them in the corners of the house to like the outside. You know, when you have those random like corners of your house, you just put a tree there and, you know, hide it. Yes. That's what she does. So I copy her and it looks somewhat like you tried. So there you go. Hot tip of the day. With me, you'll get a nice house, but you have to hire your old landscaper. That's not, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's my house. That was an experience. I only cried twice. I texted my boyfriend. <laughs> oh God. So good. I'm like, babe, I can't do this. Your house is disgusting. He's like, why are you taking out your frustration on my house? It didn't do anything. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Well, it looks cool. <laughs> is it on the gallery now? Uh, I believe so. I think it should be under the Plum Bob podcast tag. Okay. I'll have to look it up because it's cool. Like, I want to download it for my game because it's it, – it's kind of like a modern, yeah, like a modern ranch style kind of. I don't know. I like it. Thank you. I tried. <laughs> so did you try this at all, Melissa? Well, I'm doing it live right now. <laughs> um, uh, insider podcasting tip. I was not going to be on this episode until very recently. Um, but I am not a builder, as we've said, and I'm... Literally, I don't have any reference pictures, so that probably would have helped. But I am, like, struggling to remember my home. I live I live in an apartment building right now, so that would probably be the easier challenge. So maybe maybe you'll find that on the gallery, too. But my the house that I grew up in is your typical suburban uh, two-story. We live out in the woods. So the lot that I've placed on is the, like, Newcrest one next to the playground. So I'll have to, like forest that up a little bit but yeah this is really hard we'll probably have to do some checking back in with me because first of all i can't i like don't remember like where to put stairs like this whole thing so far is not making a whole heap of sense but i'm i'm getting there i think one of roxy's tips that she wrote in the script was like build a fancy box and then make more boxes (laughs) in it (laughs) So it's it's definitely going to be interesting. Oh, that's why this doesn't make sense. We have a big old foundation and a like serious crawl space situation. So that's probably why. I'm like there are steps but there are also steps. There are steps leading up to my front door and then steps like when you get right inside to the second floor. All right. Check back in with me cuz I'll be making <laughs> progress. Marissa, yeah. you've you've had a ton of these, right? Cuz you've got you've kind of been all over. Fun fact about Marissa Cowplant. I have moved in my lifetime. I can't, I honestly don't even know for sure, but it's definitely, I would say minimum 20 times in my life. I met Dylan four years ago. My, I met my husband four years ago. And since meeting him, I've moved six times. So that's just to give you a little heads up about Marissa. Marissa likes to move. So, um, and I'm, my family was not in the military. My family, that, I don't even know. I honestly can't even tell you why we've moved. 
It's so you can build all, you can have like a, a wide variety of houses to build in The Sims. That's the whole reason, right? I'm helping you. And, you know, I was, I was thinking about it. Was it yesterday? I was driving to work and I was thinking about the episode and I was thinking about, because I haven't like necessarily done this challenge recently, but mm-hmm. I do this challenge with every Sims game. I always build some house that I've, like the house that I've lived in or houses I've lived in in the past. Because I fucking 20 houses to choose from, you're going to fucking, you know, make some of them. You run out of ideas eventually and you just start making what you know. Um, so when it's for so for me, it's like, what house did you grow up in? It's like, I didn't grow up in any house because especially in my childhood, the longest we lived in a house was four years. That was a condo. And that was when I was in sixth grade. So like I, you know, I was already sixth grade I was already born but you know what I mean like I didn't grow up in any one house so so I've remade uh I remade that condo that we lived in and that's that was pretty cute um I've re- so we when I was in kindergarten we lived in this like huge mansion my dad came into money and for some reason thought it was a great idea to buy a huge mansion yeah we lived there for like a year <laughs> and had <Hell> to yeah. <laughs> so like when I say huge mansion I mean I was in kindergarten. I used to ride my scooter, my Barbie scooter, from one end of the house to the other end of the house. And, like, it would take a couple of minutes. Hell yeah. In a scooter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it was a mansion. It was weird. So, but it's kind of impossible to build that house because it's really long and skinny, obviously, hence the scootering. So, um, like, no lot really works in The Sims. Like, what lot is, like, long and skinny? So the only, like, iteration of The Sims I've ever been able to make that house was uh, Sims 2 because you could, like, uh, you know, you could, like, make your own um, lots or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, lot sizes. So that's the only time I've been able to successfully build that house. Um, a couple of months ago, I did make my apartment. Um, and <laughs> so I made my apartment and I made my husband and I. And I played it for about like five seconds. And I was like, this is depressing. I don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm playing my husband and I, watching TV, playing video games, talking to each other. You know, it's like, oh, like this is a little too meta for me. So <laughs> I, <did. laughs> I can relate. I made the mistake of putting my dogs and me and my boyfriend in the house. And I'm like, this is too real. Like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. And, like, it's so funny because I know so many people that do that. Like, my sister-in-law always makes her and my brother, when they, you know, when the Sims them have kids, she names it after her kids and the kids, she, you know, kid names she also wanted in the future or whatever. And I don't know how she does it. Like, it just feels too like weird for me to be playing myself. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like it. Agree. Yeah. It's like, oh, like, no, I don't like this. So, but basically, like, tips and tricks. It's funny what Melly was saying that she kept having to change, you kept having to change like lot sizes. Uh, that's, yeah, that's like my number one tip. I always start in like the biggest lot available and then build the house and then just move it wherever the house like actually fits. Yeah. Because I've done that so many times where I'm like, oh, this lot is fine. It's like, nope, I need more space. So if you're doing this challenge, just go to like the Newcrest park area or something and just build yeah. it. like 64 that's- by 64, I think. That's what I'm doing right now, and I gotta tell you, like, I'm I'm resizing as I go because, like, mm-hmm. we did not grow up in a big house either. Like, it was not that big of a house. It was like a standard size house, and it feels like it's not fitting. Now, mm-hmm. as I go, I'm like readjusting and resizing, so I think that's gonna make a difference. But boy, this is weird. I tried, but I have uh, my cult town in that one, and I felt bad leading them because they're still going. <laughs> You ever notice how there's no um, there's no carpeted stairs? Oh yeah, that's so annoying. I hate that. It's We're like, already making artistic liberties. Yeah, like I don't understand. Like I feel like every house I've lived in had carpeted stairs. Like that's the more common thing to have carpeted stairs, right? I don't know. I would think. I, I would think so. I hate carpet in general. I'm in the process. Yeah, I could do without of, it. Of buying a house right now. And the amount mm. of old carpeted houses that I've seen disgusts me. I can't. Well, and especially because <laughs> you have dogs. Like, yeah. no, you want wood. <laughs> mm. My dog loves carpet. Like, he will rip it up. 
so I can. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> um, I guess, like, another tip is if you have a hallway that's one square. Uh, that's kind of, That helped me, like, because a lot of houses is hallways, right? So, like, sure. if you think of hallways only as one square, that helps kind of put things in perspective to other parts of the house. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, just – and, like, bathrooms are never going to be – unless you live in, like, some crazy fancy spa bathroom house. Like, bathrooms are probably going to be six squares most. Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, doing stuff like that kind of helps if you think think of your house in squares – yeah, and that does. We never account for closets either, because in The Sims regular houses, they don't have closets. And then when you're building your house, you're like, "Wait, I have a closet. How do I put a closet?" Oh, yeah, where the here? fuck do I put this closet? <laughs> <laughs> no, mm-hmm. this is already this is a challenge for sure. Also, the whole idea of garages. Like, how do you guys do garages? I don't have a garage, thank God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> garages are tough. I know that you can build on different levels um so like let's say your house is on a foundation but your garage is not on a foundation that's flush to the ground Mm -hmm. i've seen let's plays with that but i'm not quite sure how to do it because every time i mean i assume i don't know because like okay so build so melissa right now you're building build you know a foundation Mm -hmm. then I don't know, maybe take um take the wall tool and don't start it like connecting to the already built foundation lot, but like mm-hmm. move it a couple squares over and start from there, but you you would still have the foundation attached to the wall. So I'm not t- you know what I mean? Like if you move it a couple squares over where it's attached, I'm trying to think. My garage has like a couple stairs going into it. So what if, I, okay, if I do this, you're, you're hearing it live listeners. So <laughs> apologies for the clicks. So if I have that size of a building, I have a room and it's there. I just want to make sure I'm keeping up with the sizes. Let's get rid of this room. Won't let me delete a room. Okay. Um, we're going to shrink it. And then if I move this and it's next to it. So if I move it next to it, there's one square's worth of distance between. If I try to pop it and connect it, it pops up and adds a foundation. Yes. Yes. BB move object. Do you have BB move objects on? I haven't yet. You should. Turn that on. What is that again? BB dot. Move objects on. That's like our lifeblood right there. Like we cannot play without that. <laughs> you can start building your house without that on because it's not going to be a good time. Oh yeah, no. Like I still turn it off every once in a while. Like especially in kitchens when I'm putting like the cabinets together because I don't want to fucking mess with that. But I have it off a majority of the time I'm building for sure. The kitchen was the hardest thing because we have a weird counter and then it splits off into like a circular island. It was a mess. Mm. I think I did it. The circular islands are hard because because all the counter spaces are a certain are a certain size. The circular counter has to be relatively big, and if you have like a smaller one, it just looks hilariously huge in like a small kitchen. So it's like, yeah, circular counters are tough, but they look cool. They do, and this one's like a half circle. It's not even like the full circle. It's like. Oh yeah. I'm like, okay, this isn't look right, but it's how it's Yeah, what I what I typically do with that is I'll like put it the circular part next to a wall. Like so I'll you have the space for the kitchen and then I'll just put one wall. I don't even know how to describe this with the oh, this is hard. Okay, so you have your kitchen. What a great medium for describing a visual game. I know, right? A podcast. And I'm I'm like the worst with describing things. I'm like such a visual person. And I talk with my hands a lot. And so I feel like because no one's here, like, you know (laughs) what I mean? I'm like depending on you guys to be able to see me with my hands, but you can't. So it's like, I don't know what to do. I sent a picture (laughs) in our group chat so you can see how the island turned out. It's not exactly how it looked. Oh. But I had to make it work. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Melly, where 
your basically where your cabinets end and the like the area in between the curtain and the cabinet mm-hmm. that's where I would put a wall and then just have like the circular cabinets coming out of that if your house doesn't look like that then obviously you wouldn't do that but that's just what I always do for houses and also I don't even know why I'm saying it because it's not relevant so just ignore me (laughs) so in this picture are you sitting at the desk in the room with the blue bed yes that is me right now (laughs) (laughs) meta (laughs) all right so we've kind of talked through some items here. And I think we've gotten a couple of the questions, you know, mixing Wait. wall heights. Oh, sorry, Melissa, go ahead. Did you, did you, were you able to put a <sighs> really? Lower? Okay. So if you have BB move objects on, I'm pretty sure you can. So if you have it on, mm-hmm. build a room, just like a, make a small room with mm-hmm. no foundation that's separate from your house. Mm-hmm. Now pick that up push down the alt key okay, and move it towards the house and just try to get it as close as possible. And it shouldn't clip to the, uh, your build. So it is trying to click. Hang on. Yeah. You have, you kind of have to like put it next to it, but not fully on it. And then you can put a tree to like cover the little gap. Uh, That's the only way I can think to have mixed foundations. If you are play- if you're listening right now and you're like Marissa, you are not smart. Um, like this is exactly how you build with different levels of foundations. I can't figure it out. That's the only way I do it. Is I just it's have hard. BB move the objects, build it separately, and then just holding down the alt key, push it towards the house as close as it can go without clipping. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a challenge. No, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm honestly like tabling that and moving on to other. <laughs> Spot. I got other things to do. <laughs> I mean the the garage is a big a big deal in our house. It's like my dad's like man cave. Mm. So it's definitely like going to be worth putting stuff in. It doesn't have a car in it. It's just got lots of stuff. Yeah. So, so uh, I can you know, avoid that I've, issue um, with the Sims. I've heard of people wanting to know, you know, since Sims 4 doesn't have cars, like in a lot of Facebook groups I follow, they say like, okay, I have, you know, my house has a garage, but I don't want to just make a useless garage and put a car in it and not use that space. Like, I still want to use that space um, and just kind of make it not really look like my house, but be usable for The Sims. And for garages, I always say do laundry. Just throw the laundry in there because it's usually where people have their laundry rooms mm-hmm. anyways in the garage, you know. And yeah. then um, you can put, like, I put random stuff like the chess table, the easel, maybe I'll throw like an extra computer in there. You can it's even storage. Do, yeah, like you can put a bunch of bookshelves in there. Like I say put the things that you probably don't have in your house but is useful for the Sims. Like hmm. how many people have a, like a chess table, like an actual fancily made purposeful chess table in their house like probably not that many people they may have like a chess board but not like an actual chess table you know and so like i say put a chess table there do a art easel i can't imagine a ton of people have like a fully set up art easel in their house so throw that in the garage you know suspend reality in that room everything else can be the same if you're thinking of decor just think of like seasonal items or like items yep. that you don't use all the time seasons has a bunch of great stuff um or like the backyard packs or the outdoor living packs of stuff that like it's a thing you don't use all the time so like yeah. even in the sulani stuff like you could put like a pool floaty in there i mean the one in your yes. real house is probably like mostly deflated but you could put that in there you could do um i think um, have we ever talked on the show about um, sizing up toy cars to make them look like real cars? I I know I've talked about it, but I don't know if you guys have. So I can't think of you guys have. So yeah, you just size up toy cars. But we had that recent, recent update where The Sims uh, actually added every car that they have driving around or mm. in the parking lot and get famous, all of those cars. They're not... They're no. They are no. now all in the 
debug menu. So you can actually oh, put... Cool. I've been yeah, putting you don't have my to use toy cars for the past 10 minutes, and I was muted this whole freaking time. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Anything to add? I was just going to add that I, I used, like, the blow-up cars. I can't find the the new cars. I turned the debug menu on, and I can't find it. It's a new... It's a new cheat. You have to use... I'm looking it up right now because I forget it off the top of my head. I'm like, uh, why it's is not the... responding to me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it is. So previously, we just entered, you know, BB show hidden objects, mm-hmm. and that brought up the debug. Now you're going to say, or you're going to type, BB dot show live edit objects and then to disable it you say or type bb show live edit objects false and everything is no spaces but if you have the false that is a space so you just have it all combined and then make a space and put false it's bb dot right like a period Mm -hmm. yeah i'm sorry did i not say that yep bb dot show live edit objects all one word and there's 1200 new items and the nice thing is that those cars are already sim sized like you don't have to make them bigger or smaller they're nice. already so kind of awkward yeah. you take the little toy car and like you blow it up <laughs> oh for sure it looks so bad and there's like two cars so it's like okay everyone in this neighborhood has the box car or the truck that's it that's all you get <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're pretty cool um, and I mean, I those objects are really, really nice. You get ton, like cool fences from Sulani. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm reading the patch notes, and I realized I'm doing the not so berry challenge, and my mm-hmm. sim uh, rejected one of the new sims that EA recently added to the game. One of the new townies. Mm-hmm. She rejected him for a hot alien. Sure, as you do. <laughs> as you do. Anyway, um, but yeah, so uh, the live edit objects is a great cheat if you're going to do this this now, if you want to do the home sweet home challenge, you can probably find a car that's similar to either when you had growing up or now because there's so many cars in there. I have to go back now. I have to redo everything, delete everything, bulldoze the lot. We're starting over. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Oh, man, pretty cool. I'm just inching walls forward and seeing if I can make this happen. This stupid garage connection is going to drive me up a fucking wall. Oh yeah. Um and then if you're so if you're building like an apartment, I made my apartment and I mean of mm-hmm. course you can like put it in the, you know, if you have city living, you could just put it in there. Um right. but I live on the ground level of an apartment, so I'm like that look that would be weird for me. Just like, oh, here's this high rise for my ground level apartment, you know? So I just put, I just made a really small, I'm pretty sure I put it on like the smallest lot in Newcrest. Um, I just put it there and just made it look like a regular house. Like obviously it's just a big square because that's what apartments are. But I just made it look like a normal house from the outside because, you know, it's a Sims. So you can pretend that your apartment's in a house. No one's going to judge you. Yeah. Everyone's friends here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Roxy had some questions, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when she says, can I mix wall heights? And no, you can't. We kind of addressed a lot of these. Chimneys. Talk to me about chimneys. Do you guys ever use them in regular gameplay or in I mean, when you're you trying to put match? down the fireplaces, but like for it to come out of the roof, it would have to be like making a little square box and you'd have to make it match your chimney, but it's not going to be a functional chimney at all. Mm-hmm. It's a Got it. And there's um, in the roof, um, I for roof decorations, I believe is what it's called in the game. Um, it's when you're looking at the catalog, you'll see the roof and you'll see, I think it's like the top of a chimney or like a wind something. Uh, if you click that, there is actual like chimney decorations. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if your house does have like a fully formed brick chimney, uh, like Melly said, you can just build a little square, like a half wall 
like, you know, with those smaller half walls, you can put that like on top of the roof and then Mm -hmm. put one of those chimney looking tops like on top of the half wall basically i'm sorry i this is really hard to describe but (laughs) like yeah and then we talked about the foundation heights again if you guys are listening and you're like you guys come on now this is how you do it please tell us please write to us under the plum bob podcast at gmail.com reach out to us on social media we'll list them all below please tell us because that's the only way i can think is the all key is just moving over (laughs) Um, we talked landscaping like a pro. We talked terrain tools a little bit. Do you guys have any don't, like? Don't do it, Millie. You talked about your your hill behind your house. Um, Mars, any uh, any fun landscaping situations you've had to solve for? I mean, you know, it kind of it's frustrating with terrain tools because they introduce terrain tools, but none of the worlds have terrain i mean right. maybe, i think solani has a little bit more terrain than everywhere else but you know so exactly what Melly was saying it's like okay my house is at the bottom of a hill so if you try to build the bottom of a hill outside of the lot it's just flat so it just looks ridiculous you just have this weird half hill going into your lot so that kind of is annoying i don't really know you know, it, it makes it difficult to kind of make more natural terrain tools um, or use terrain more naturally. I think the best way to use terrain tools, if you're on a totally flat lot, is to go lower and do like a split level house. Um, and we can do a stream on that or, or do a YouTube video. I, we can put that together. That's fine. Uh, of how to basically put a little bit of the house like in the terrain. And then um, build up build around up. it, you know, because that's thinking sinking down is it's impossible. It, it doesn't look right if you have like a driveway. So you put the flooring down; the flooring will stay straight. It will not go down with it. It just looks stupid. It's not. Fun. Yeah, it does. It does. And I was okay. I don't remember if James Turner said this in a video of his, or if I actually saw this from EA. Uh, James Turner is uh, the Sim Supply. He, what would you call him? Like the liaison between EA and like the everyday person. Like I feel like they yeah. just tell him things, and he just then just tells <laughs> us. Um, but basically, they said the reason, like, yeah, if you build on a hill, like the floors are flat, or the the flowers, like if you if you're on a hill and you try to lower like a rock or a patch of flowers lower on the hill it'll just remain flat they said the reason for that is because of the gallery so like when you download that house it's gonna look all messed up Mm -hmm. from you know and i don't exactly know why but that's just what they said like we can't have like the flowers curving onto the hill because when the person downloads it it won't curve on the hill so Basically, they're kind of saying like terrain tools aren't really, they're like hollow inside, basically. They don't actually have like a depth to them. So that's why sure. everything's just flat in them because they're not fully fleshed out hills. They're just kind of these weird, I don't know, hollow things. So that's that's why they say that the terrain, the terrain is kind of messed up and why it's flat and you kind of have to mess with it a lot to make it look somewhat realistic because of the gallery. So blame the gallery. (laughs) That's okay. Gallery. We're not mad at you. No, we love you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Alrighty. So I, I don't know if you want to include this, but I read this article thing about the automatically add windows. And I don't think that's a thing anymore. That was a thing in um 2014 when this article was written yeah it was a thing and i don't think it's a thing anymore and i know that's been in previous sims so we can just skip that because that's not a thing anymore interesting (laughs) yeah i remember that being a thing but it's not anymore it's good to have a little sims history to talk about yeah and i mean maybe i'm just crazy but i'm 100 percent sure that's not a thing anymore (laughs) because i remember they're being like um if you put a window like little 
I'm pretty sure if you pressed a key or something, like little shadows of that same window would pop up around the room. And if you clicked it, it would just add all the windows. I think it was a shift key, actually. I think if you like held, put a window in and was holding the shift key, like little shadows of where the game thought you should put the windows, they would just kind of pop up randomly throughout the room. Got it. But that's, I have not seen that, yeah, since 2014. And I'm pretty sure that was a thing in like Sims two maybe maybe <laughs> but yeah not anymore back when building was actually easy and had auto roof yeah yeah it was like the auto roof thing and yeah you could do auto roofs you could do auto windows probably do auto so doors so <laughs> much good times oh of the good old days um i have a question because we don't, we I feel like building and decorating are definitely two different worlds. Um, and I'm much better at decorating than I, than I am at building. But um, are there any like item pieces, either base game or even CC, if you dabble in that, that um, you know really matched something that you've had in real life that you were like, oh my god, this is this is perfect. This is my bed. This is the bed that I had, or this is the futon we had in our living room. On my house, no. I had to kind of put what matched, but it's hard to clutter with The Sims because you, it doesn't allow you to put as many things. Because my desk is a disaster. That clean desk <laughs> on that picture does not reflect my real life. We've had we have some clutter tips. If you have uh, interest in doing more clutter, you can check that out. I believe the episode title is Shutters and Clutter, and it's mm-hmm. we have a nice guest star, uh, Ryan Mills, who talks about all things, you know, ways to use those sheets and kind of stack clutter on top of each other. There's ways of doing it where you can make it look very realistic. So check yeah. that out. Yeah, he's. And check him out, uh, Ryan Mills, on the gallery. His builds are so good. Oh, love it. Um, there's a couple of things, not a ton. Um, there was like a couch, you know, the green couch with the little, there's like really hard to see like little flowers or little mm. plants. I think yeah. it comes in orange too and like green. That <laughs> looks like a couch that we had. Uh, the rooster, you know, the blue rooster. Yeah. My mom has a rooster like weirdly similar to that i don't know anymore she used to collect roosters she like had a oh no she still has them yeah uh she has i can't even tell you 20 roosters i don't even know a ton of roosters and she has them all is is that a wrong thing because my mom had roosters everywhere in the kitchen too or like it's either roosters or the little chef that like oh mm -hmm. (laughs) what what is this (laughs) why do you have this I think that is a mom thing. I don't even know. And like, if I go somewhere, like to a cute little like shop or like an artisan shop or whatever, if I see like a little chicken or a little rooster thing, I'll like get it for her. Like, I don't know Aww. if it's one of those things that like one time she said I like <laughs> I like <chicken>. this, <laughs> and then just everyone got it for her over the years, and she's like, I don't even care anymore. But now I have all these freaking chickens. <laughs> I have that with a couple people in my life, um, but it's the other way. Do you do you have that like people get get that one kind of gift for you because you said you liked owls one time? Me with turtles and yes. cactuses. Cactuses and, and turtles, nice. Oh. Everyone used to give me turtle stuff. It didn't help that my backpack was a literal turtle shell. Oh, oh, cool! Ever since then, they called me the turtle girl, and I hated it. But I actually like turtles, so yeah. So there you go. There you go. So I don't know if you guys do this, but for holidays, um, my family all has a certain style of decoration, like for Christmas. Um, so that's what that's what we do. So like my sister's, hers is like snowmen and like mm-hmm. icy stuff. So she'll like literally put fake snow. And it's funny, she lives in Arizona. And she puts like fake snow garland on her fireplace and like I see everything like snowman. She has like a bunch of little snowmen. My mom's is Santa's. She had not Santa's. I'm sorry. My mother-in-law is Santa's. My mom is Christmas trees. I can't tell you how many Christmas trees she has. And she just puts them like every surface of the house is just filled with Christmas trees. Um, My sister-in-law is nutcrackers. And then mine is becoming reindeer. (laughs) Like what? Because my tree is kind of 
woody. I don't know. There's lots of wood things and like cranberry. It's like that rustic. kind of yeah. rustic. Yeah, kind of rustic. And I'm like, oh, like reindeer would look really good with this. And now every Christmas is just reindeer. Reindeer everything. But I, I like reindeer, so I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I love it. Final uh, tips to wrap up. Yeah, um, I did want to shout this out. Yep. So Roxy says for tips uh, to take pics in live mode um, and you just press tab, just have all the walls that press tab and you can move the camera around freely and take a bunch of pictures by pressing the letter C on your keyboard. Free rotate is huge. And because in our houses, obviously we're going to have, you know, a TV caddy cornered or a bookshelf that's not necessarily flat against the wall. You know, we have normal houses so (laughs) how did you free rotate you go to the sims 3 camera you click on the item you want to rotate and you hold down the um oh i think it's shift is it alt okay oh yeah in here but that might be wrong uh yeah yeah so it's alt so (laughs) i just kind of i automatically press things so i never remember which key it is uh so you hold alt and then while you're also simultaneously holding the objects like clicking down with your mouse and then you can just move your mouse anywhere you want and it'll freely rotate the objects like spin it around any direction so you can kind of adjust where the object should be uh because i cannot think of any house in real life that looks like the sims houses like you know what i mean like yeah has their like even like rugs like nobody has their rug like perfectly you know, square. So yeah. I free rotate a lot with uh, rugs. I just kind of make them a little bit wonky because that's more yeah. thinking. Um, Love it. But you have to have the Sims 3 camera on. Does not work with Sims 4 camera. Don't know why. Seems kind of weird to me that they wouldn't have that in both cameras, but there you go. Yeah. It, for the layman, uh, me included, there's the, when you click in the top right hand corner on that menu, when you're, you're like, Sims 3 camera and 4, what are you talking about? Oh. There's different camera options you can use. Um, and I think they included the Sims 3 camera just in case you were used to operating with that set of controls. Well, and I think it's for builders. Right. Because it's more, uh, you have a little bit more freedom and control with the Sims 3 camera. So I typically, I typically build with the Sims 3 camera and then play with the Sims 4 camera because I do like playing with the Sims 4 camera better. I think the Sims 3 overall is just better for building. Yes, 100%. Thanks, EA. <laughs> Thanks, EA. Thanks for thinking about us. <laughs> I'm currently in a labyrinth of squares in my childhood home on here <laughs> that's why I, I said in the tips like either get your blueprint um from the city um if it's your i think you have to pay for it like it's probably a couple of dollars but you can actually oh, wow. download blueprints or if you see like a house that you absolutely love go to that city i don't remember i don't know exactly how to do this but you can do it you can download or like get a blueprint sent to you mm-hmm. um so get a blueprint, or if it's a house you live in or have lived in, just draw it out. Like, if you have graphing paper especially, just draw mm-hmm. out the basic shape of the house and all the rooms and everything, and then you can just recreate it on The Sims. Just go into the above view and just map out the house, and that way you're not getting bogged down with, like, okay, this room and this room, you can literally just map it out exactly. I think that's, like, the only way to do it is just do the above ground, look at some kind of blueprint, and then just copy, basically. I went room by <laughs> room. So I made the square, and then I'm like, okay, this is the kitchen. So I laid out the kitchen, put the walls, and then I moved on and just slowly started carving away at what was extra space and what was an actual room in the house. Mm-hmm. That might be the most complicated way, though. <laughs> so I don't know if that'll help. I'm okay. sort of going room by room. We have this, like, entryway foyer that is, like, changing. It's, like, becoming a blob right now because every <laughs> every entry point is based on that kind of hallway. Mm-hmm. And all the other rooms are dependent on, like, how they how you enter them from all of these rooms. So it's really interesting. Yeah, very difficult. Building your own house or house you lived in is definitely like 
like open heart surgery. Like it's going to look yeah. insane before it actually looks good or like doing a smoky eye. You know what I mean? Like it looks really bad before it looks uh, good. Yes. <laughs> so just keep, so accurate. keep chugging away at it. It's going to take time. Like even my apartment <laughs> took a couple hours, just a little apartment. Cause we have yeah. like a hallway of closets. And so just trying to figure out how to make a hallway of closets is <laughs> like weird. So that took a while, but um, that will be on the gallery and I'll do, I'll do the hashtag home sweet home as well. Cause that is the official like name of this challenge. Um, but I'll put the under the plum bob hashtags as well. So if you guys want to live in my apartment, you can, that's weird. <laughs> I think the fact that it's your house makes it even like more stressful because you want it to be perfect. Like this is my house. I should know what my house looks like inside and out <laughs> every single day. So no pressure. This is absolutely open heart surgery. This is wild. <laughs> every time I move, like no, this wall should be more in here. Then I look at the other end of the room. It's like nah, it really isn't like that. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But you like have to think of your house on a grid like that's the only yeah. way to do it you just have to think like okay if this was a square would it be the half square or would it be the full square <laughs> or would it be two squares i don't even know <laughs> it's nuts it's great though it's like perfect and this is an activity that i'm definitely doing for the rest of today so <laughs> i love it any other like tips resources that we can send our listeners to to try to wrap their head around this challenge i would say check out speed builders on YouTube, uh, there's tons of awesome speed builders. Um, if you just type in like speed build on YouTube, Sims 4, you know, you can get ideas for um, landscaping. You can get ideas for kind of how to put a floor plan together, even if they're not explaining it. Just watching somebody do it kind of helps put it in perspective, I guess, or, you know, I don't know. So mm -hmm. I, that's what really helped me landscape for sure. I feel like building, you know, I've freaking been building the sims for the last 20 years so i got that pretty figured out but uh, landscaping was always kind of tough so uh that's fun to do and and roxy was saying like how do you landscape it's like you just kind of throw some stuff down and as long as you have the same plants throughout the house you know it's fine you can just put my favorite is that um i think it's called yellow flower grass or something and it's kind of this slightly s-shaped grass with little yellow dots in it basically and mm -hmm. i just kind of i'll rotate it different ways i'll have it kind of coming out of the if you have bb moves up objects on you can place it pretty far off the um grid of the lot so you can kind of blend it in with the rest of the world a little bit better if you want to um I don't know you know just kind of mess around with it and as long as you have consistent like i wouldn't put you know, a cactus and then a Japanese bonsai tree and then a, a hydrangea bush. You know what I mean? Like have the same types of flowers surrounding the house and you'll be fine. And and throw in the the brown. It's called, I like the garden one. It's called, called garden soil, that terrain paint. That looks hmm. the most natural, I think. And I even put that around the house. So even if there's not like necessarily a flower or anything or a bush there, I'll still surround my house with it. And then I also surround um, pathways with it. So if you have train pathways or if you have uh, actual like concrete or whatever pathways, I'll just put a tiny, tiny little bit of that, that uh, garden soil there just so it, cause that's what it looks like in real life. You know, all concretes like pathways have that little bit of dirt showing. So that's what I do. I don't know. It's just those little, little details that just kind of make it look a little bit better. Definitely. Yeah. Th these are the types of things that like my brain, my brain is very detail oriented, but not for this. <laughs> like at a certain point I'm like, and the grass is green. Great. We're done. Like just live in it. <laughs> but being that this challenge isn't necessarily to have Sims live in the house and just to sort of recreate something that exists in real life. I'm going to have to frame it a different way in my brain, but so far it's, uh, it's, I'm excited to keep going on it. Yeah. I mean, just kind of think of it like if you are the type of person that thinks, oh, well, I don't know if Sims can walk around this or I need a lot of space because Sims won't be able to, you know, talk to each other here. I would say just mm -hmm. kind of put that out of your brain and just make the house. 
like make it as accurately as possible and you'll, your sims will figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can go and adjust little things here and there to make them be able to move around the space. But you would be surprised. Sims can move around in pretty tight spaces. So I think it'll be okay. You'll be okay. Don't That's worry. True. <laughs> I'm also doing this thing where I can't decide if I want to use decor from how it was when I grew up or decor from how it is now. So that's my other uh, challenge piece, but mm. it's 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 been fun so far, and I'm going to keep going with it today, probably. Melly, any final thoughts? Um, I think you're going to go into it with a certain idea. Just throw it out the window. It's not going to work out that way. <laughs> Let's be realistic here. <laughs> that's it. That's my tip. I love it. There you go. That's perfect. Ten out. <laughs> All right. I'm with that. We'll move on to our newest segment. It's not very new anymore, but it's pretty new. And it's called, What Just Happened? (laughs) I'm going to do the weird voice every time, guys. (laughs) You can't judge me about it. Does anyone have a particular propensity and love and need to read this? I can read it. I feel like I'm talking. Great, I'll do it. Okay. We have a story from our listener, Danielle, from Facebook. It was on the And That's Why We Sim uh, subgroup. Uh, That's an offshoot of the podcast. And That's Why We Drink. Big fans over here. Danielle, thanks for writing us in. She says, When I was new to Sims 4 cheats, I was trying to cheat the need of a baby in the house. Shift click, and I see the bubble with nothing in it. Turns out, that bubble will get your baby taken away by social workers. Oh, okay. So she clicks on the baby to try to resolve some cheat needs and accidentally yep. clicks the, like a blank yep. uh, option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it turns out empty bubble. Mm-hmm. The empty bubble. Apparently that's tr- that triggers your baby getting taken away by social workers. This is one of my first legacy challenges. I had been playing this family for generations Realize that my last say was almost two full generations ago. Oh, my God. Countless builds and remodels lost. So angry. Oof. Yeah, that. Had the baby taken away. Yeah. I mean, what do you do at that point? You have another baby. Start over kid? Just have another baby. Or have another baby. baby. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But the thing that stinks with that, when you click that, empty bubble and the baby gets taken away it stays in your family tree so maybe that's why danielle had to restart because she didn't want just this forever baby just at the end of her family tree you know yeah no i get it i I, like that would really be tough for me but generations and and like remodels and all this stuff Mm -hmm. like uh that's a real that's a real bummer danielle thanks for writing us in oh yeah I'll also take this next one, seeing as uh, <laughs> it's a it's a little correction section from the latest Social Bunny uh, episode that Jane and I recorded not too long ago. Uh, many times throughout the episode, I said, "Hey, if we're wrong, let us know. Correct us, and correct us, you did. So thank you very much." Um, we have a confirmed uh, positive identification on the couple in the new. Uh, album art jane and i were kind of going back and forth saying like all right well so it's two uh female sims kind of like chumming it up Mm -hmm. are they lesbians is that kind of a conspiracy theory who knows uh that has been confirmed so Mm -hmm. it's in their description it's it's like oh her girlfriend so and so i forget the name yeah, so if you go on the gallery Mm -hmm. i think all of these new album art sims are in the gallery you can download them uh, with their descriptions and everything. And it does depict that they are together. So we have Della Ostro. As a kid, Della lived all over the world, shadowing her mom, a globally sought-after fashion photographer. That experience gave Della an inherent sense of optimism and a deep entrepreneurial spirit. She recently launched her first fashion line, and her unique pieces and global style are starting to get press. Her girlfriend, Mia, a designer in her own right, helps keep her informed of trends outside the fashion industry. Mia Hayes is the other female sim in that picture. With a head full of number, I'm sorry, with a head for numbers and a creative eye, Mia splits her time between freelance programmer and artist gigs. Being both a bit of an introvert and a bit of a rebel, This independence suited her outlook on life. Mia has a unique way of attracting creative, high-energy friends like Noah and her girlfriend, Della. 
They love her genuine, almost kid-like enthusiasm. She is the glue that bonds her social circles together. Oh, I love it. So good. And so, you know, Mia Hayes is the, if you're looking at the cover art, she's on the left-hand side in the blue hat, blonde hair, and the green top. And the her girlfriend, Della, has the pink hair, the new pink hair that's like kind of wavy with the top knot. Della has that hair, and she has the recently uh, unlocked Get Famous jacket, uh, mm -hmm. which... You know, I know a lot of people aren't super happy about it. I know you guys talked about it but uh, mm -hmm. in the Social Bunny episode, but a couple of items from actual expansion packs were, like, made available to everybody. And one of them was that Get Famous jacket um, that she's wearing, Della's is wearing in the cover art. I personally don't really mind it, but I get why people I think would it's not be happy about it. about you paid for something and then it's free. But it happens all the time with games. Mm -hmm. Like some games will come out and you'll have to pay for it. And then over the, the years, it'll be free. And it's not like I'm going to message Microsoft and be like, hey, mm -hmm. you're giving away Halo now. So give my money back, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, it's not like it's, I mean, Get Famous came out, you know, almost a year ago, which is crazy to think about because it's already almost August or it probably is wow. August by the time this comes out. So like, it's not like, a bunch of stuff on Sulani was recently, you know, made free. It's like older stuff. So I'm well, not too bothered about it. That's just <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm in that camp too. But if you are wondering what we're talking about, uh, the latest, hopefully the latest, the July episode of Social Bunny, uh, we cover a little bit about those new changes. Also, in that episode, we mentioned that there's a cute little bouncing llama in the bottom right-hand corner of the new uh, main menu screen. It's not a llama. It's a llama corn, Melissa. Get it from together. From a while ago. <laughs> Come on. I know. I don't know how I missed that. I'll tell you how I missed that. I haven't really played in a while, so I didn't like really take a look at it. But it's so obviously a llama corn. I could see it when I loaded up the game today to try to build my childhood home. Um, it's a llama corn. Obviously. And is that the freezer bunny or the, so the freezer bunny with it? Sure. I think the freezer bunny is like a motif, like a like a play on so the sh the social bunny. <laughs> yeah, because we say social bunny, but the so and I sometimes I get them confused. But the social bunny was in Sims Two that that guy in the dirty, creepy <laughs> bunny outfit. <laughs> Like, it's not cute. It's a guy in a dirty rabbit outfit that's pink that comes, yeah. flies down with an umbrella, slaps yeah. your sim around, and, like, shakes him up, yeah. and then flies away. <laughs> so yeah. If, if they are too starved for social attention, a magical creature will appear out of nowhere and, like, work on those needs, mm -hmm. which, uh, like, God bless. <laughs> This is, this is what us veterans had to deal with in the older games. Like, tragic clowns, just some weird shit, Drew Carey. you guys. Who fucking wants Drew Carey out of nowhere? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Katy Perry with her candy hat. Nobody asked for this. You don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> if this episode has made you think, oh, please, give me more of this content. <laughs> um, good, good for you. Like, God bless. Um... The next couple of episodes, you can expect a uh, review of uh, one of the favorite packs, Get Together. Oh. That's that's the pack that introduced clubs. Um, we've talked about clubs here and there on various episodes, but I think we can do like a nice deep dive. Um, ooh, ooh. Can I, you ladies? Can I yeah. Do nerdy dudes, shout out. Yes, we have some shout outs. Take it away. Okay. So. Nerdy Dude 24 7 is <laughs> one of our uh, Simison, Simis, Simisons. We can't call them Simisons if we can't pronounce it right. Simisons. <laughs> like citizens. Citizens. But with the sim. Simisons. Simisons. I can say that. I can't say most things. So don't, please don't base this off of me because I can't talk half the time. Uh, Cit citizens, maybe? Anyway. Sim Simizens. No. Sim Simizens. I like Simizens. That makes more sense. Great. Okay. <laughs> Simizens, one of our lovely patrons, Nerdy Dude 24 7, said uh, we were talking in our Discord chat. Side note if you want to talk to us on the daily in Discord, 
join our Patreon. You can talk to us all the time. Also, why? But yes, you can. <laughs> More importantly, why? But Patreon what? is how. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all chatting about, you know, the rest of the year and kind of we know we're going to have Realm of Magic in the fall or like later. I think, I don't know, whatever. We're talking about it. And there you dude said, just finished listening to the latest episode, which was the Social Bunny episode. And I think, I believe the expansion pack, which is mentioned in the job description, will be university. Because one of the new pre made Sims named Morgan Park, university is mentioned. So, what he's talking about is in the um, Morgan Park's description, she talks about like she just got out of uni or something. I forget. She just got out of university or is going to university. I forget. But, um, so, and the physical year for EA ends in the fall. So people are kind of thinking, okay, well, we have, you know, island living in the summer. That's kind of, you know, beach, summery kind of weather time. So in fall, what does everyone do in fall? They go to school, get, get to school, you know, university living, college living. We don't know, but we're, we're all putting our... I think we're all getting like pretty excited about university coming out in the fall and fall is probably, I think the fiscal year ends in October. So it might be like November or even December that we see university, but I think it'll be cool. We are hype. Hype. I am hype. 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 Um, Second shout out is from our Facebook page. She is also one of our Simicens on Patreon. Nikki Hass says, I love The Sims, but I have a farm to maintain in the summer. Listening to the potters while I fix fences and weed and move irrigation line makes me happy. And I feel like I'm playing while I farm. Nikki, you rock. Like, what the heck? How do you do yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. When, when we have our eventual um, farm pack that comes out someday, hashtag horses for vanity, that'll be a very, like, meta moment for you, Nikki, when we talk about all of these... Uh, all the things. Oh, right. Like, like we we're talking about making our Sims, like, fix fences and, like, clean horses. And she's, like, over here cleaning her horse. Like, yeah, horses for vanity. This rocks. <laughs> thank you, Nikki. And thank you for being a patron. You rock. If you want to be like Nikki and Nerdy Dude 24-7 and tell us things that we screwed up in this episode or tell us things that we should do in future episodes or tell us things about your life and your day and your special time. Don't tell us about your special time. <laughs> Cut that. Oh my God. We do not, we do not need a repeat of the Ikea no. living episode. Melissa, you were there for that. You know how awkward that was. <laughs> I actually don't remember which part you're talking about. The, there was a lot happening. The, I mean, come on, the, the um, ice cream, discussion still ah, can't even know ice right. cream the um, that's right murphy bed discussion like i mean come on right <laughs> i just remember you getting very upset about sharks at some which point, they so. cut <laughs> we have to cut this but they cut. but no we don't sharks because it may have been cut but that special um marissa shark rant um <laughs> Related content will be available on the Patreon. So stay tuned and join the Patreon. It's not like a lot of moolah and we're not like money hungry. We're just trying to like keep the lights on here. So give us like a dollar a month and you can learn all about why Marissa is so passionate about sharks. It's fine. You know, we're just trying to keep our domain name. Let's be real. That's about all we want to do today. <laughs> yeah. Let's just keep our website. We'll be good. There you go. If you wanted a Wicked Whimps episode, join the Patreon. It's good to listen to us talk about naughty stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. You asked for it. We're doing it, but you got to sign up for it. So yeah, you know, we don't really want like you're in the car with your kids. Okay, let's go to school, drinking your coffee. And then just here comes vanity whispering in the mic about wicked whims and all the naughty things that happens. It's like, oh, God, you have to turn it off before your beautiful children hear about what happens in wicked whims. Like, we're just yeah, gonna- and then you crash your car and then you try to sue us. And that's where we need that Patreon money to hire a lawyer. Exactly. Uh, Patreon. No. <laughs> you can find us on all the things. We are Plum Bob Cast on Instagram and Twitter. And we post beautiful images all the time of our makeovers and our builds. So check those out. And we feature the builds of our patrons and our fans. So check that out. And we post funny memes sometimes. Yes. 
lots of funny memes on Plum Bobcast on Instagram and Twitter. You can find us on Reddit at r slash Plum Bob Podcast. And you can find us on Facebook and Tumblr. We are under the Plum Bob Podcast. Just type it out. It's not that hard. Your fingers will be tired, but you'll be okay. And if you want to find all of these things and all the things that we call ours, not just our episodes, some social media stuff, but um, some tips and tricks, we have a really great graphic that we put together on how to appease the holiday gnomes that come to your house on Harvest Fest. Mm -hmm. Um, Check that out. And the Seven Toddler Challenge. And we have a brand new graphic that we made for the Seven Toddlers Challenge because Lord knows we need all the help we can get when doing one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, our website is under the plumbob.com. You can use the contact form on that site or email under the plumbob podcast at gmail.com. We are on Twitch. We are on YouTube. Just search under the plumbob podcast. We've got video content. We've got more streams coming up that we want to do. So if that's your jam, check us out. You can subscribe and rate and review us. Um, these are the things that when I'm listening to a podcast, I'm like, yeah, yeah, but definitely do it because A, you love us. B, you want more people to love us. And the way that more people love us is that more people know about us. So they can't know about us unless you review and rate us. So do that on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, on TuneIn, on Spotify, on Google Play. Um, we're out there in the universe. Just send out those good vibes and we will come to you. Mm-hmm. Especially on Apple Podcasts, for whatever reason, that's like the way to build up a podcast is for it to be on Apple. Because Apple owns the world. Yeah. It's fine. Which is messed up because I don't have any Apple products. So I'm like, screw you, Apple Podcasts. But apparently it's important. So thank you. We have a Patreon now. <laughs> follow our page and check out what you can pay to come talk to us we have different levels we have an awesome video on our instagram uh that um yours truly put together i'm very proud of it <laughs> it's like nothing um but it's just we have three different levels you can see what you get how much you get um and you know just learn about us we have merch and it's really badass it's a tank top, a t-shirt, a mug, and a bag right now. Um, we'll probably come out with more if you guys want more. But it's just a cool little like shirt with our logo on it. And then the mug has our uh, Under the Plum Bob podcast. And in the back it says, back to the real world. I mean, come on. You know you want it. Get it. You're going to love you it. You know you want You're going to love it so much. It's such a cool mug. It has like a black handle. And it's black on the inside, but white on the outside. Like, stop. It's so cute. Uh Adorable. Adorable. Thank you to all who uh, contributed to the script this month. Uh, I want to say all three of us hosts um, put some stuff in there. Thank you, Roxy, uh, for putting some in. Thank you, Jennifer and Becca. No, we don't have a Becca. And Rebecca, uh, as always. Um, and thank you to all the fan sites where we get all of our information. Sims Community, Sims VIP, Carl. We love you, Carl. Carl. Thank you for listening if you're tuning in and for not turning the episode off at this point we're just grateful to you all and we hope you join us next time but for now i think it's time that we go back to the real world thank you for listening to our hodgepodge host episode (laughs) yeah we love a hybrid love a hybrid all right everybody (laughs) bye Bye. buddies dag dag